What is up, viewer of the Watchers of Vlox? Back here, bringing you this time another fictional scenario. In the 2015 NHL entry draft, the Boston Bruins had three consecutive picks. Picks 13, 14, and 15 in the draft all belonged to the Boston Bruins. With these picks, 13th overall, the Bruins selected defenseman Jacob Zaborl. With their 14th overall pick, they selected forward Jake DeBrusque. And with their 15th overall pick, they selected Zachary Sinishin. If you take a look at the first round of the 2015 NHL Entry Draft, there are four players who have not played an NHL game thus far. One of them is a goaltender. Of the three skaters who haven't played NHL games taken in the 2015 first round, two of them are two of the Boston Bruins picks, Jacob Zaborl and Zachary Sinishin. The other player who hasn't played is Noah Juleson. He is a prospect on defense for the Canadians drafted 26th. So, I took it upon myself to propose a situation, what if the Boston Bruins took two other players instead of Jacob Zaborl and Zachary Sinishin in the 2015 NHL Entry Draft. Zaborl right now is playing for the Providence Bruins down there in the AHL. 10 points in 49 games for this defenseman. He's fresh out of the QMJHL Sea Dogs, and he's now playing in the AHL. Same thing with Zachary Sinishin. He came out of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds in the OHL. Now he's playing for the Providence Bruins. This forward is at 18 points in 46 games played, which isn't necessarily that good. Because of this, I'm going to be proposing the idea, what if the Boston Bruins, with their 13th and 15th overall picks, instead of choosing Zaborl and Sinishin, they chose Matthew Barzal, who went 16th and Brock Besser, who went 23rd. What if the Boston Bruins drafted Brock Besser, Matthew Barzal, and Jake DeBrusque? DeBrusque right now, he's playing on their second line, and he's playing with Krejci and Spooner. He's been proving himself as a very good, quick, shifty forward. He has himself 11 goals and 29 points into 54 games he's played this season with the Boston Bruins. He's proving himself to be a pretty solid draft pick. And if you take a look at the Bruins lines that we have set up over here, I actually gave him a little bit of a bust. I gave him a boost. I gave Barzal and Besser a little bit of a boost. Um, I boosted Besser's shooting a little bit and his offensive awareness, and I did the same with Matthew Barzal and his passing. Jake DeBrusque, he was listed as an 89 or as an 80 overall. I put him up to an 83. He's listed as a second liner here in the game, which is good because he's playing in the second line in real life. I also boosted Daunton Heinen, because Heinen is one of those guys who is actually taking the league by storm. Nobody really expected this fourth rounder in the 2014 draft to actually be making this much of an impact, but he's doing really well for himself with the Bruins this season. Compiled with the defensive core that we have over here, Chara, McAvoy, Krug, Carlo, McQuaid, and Miller, McAvoy actually being another one of those Calder candidates, the Bruins have four really good rookies on the forward core and one outstanding rookie out here on the defensive end. So Boston has got one of those really good teams. Of course, I didn't touch the first line, Marshan, Bergeron, Pasternak, and the second line here, Jake DeBrusque, Matthew Barzal, and Brock Mother Freaking Besser. Heinen is down here on the second line, or on the third line, same thing with David Krejci, and if we go over to our power play, we can actually take a look at the teams, or the lines that we have over here. I have Besser, Barzal, and DeBrusque all in the first line power play, just to see how this all-rookie lineup would fare. We also got Krejci, Bergeron, and Danton Heinen down there on the second unit power play. I didn't put um, any defensemen on here. Um... I wanted to keep Pasternak and Marshan on that first line PP, so that's what we got over here. But everything else, you know, it's standard Boston Bruins property. Uh, you got Hayden, Krejci, all that stuff. So this is what our team looks like. The Boston Bruins 
Had they drafted Matthew Barzal and Brock Besser, these guys, Barzal was taken immediately after the three picks by Boston, and Besser was taken a little bit later in the draft. So these guys, Besser and Barzal, this is basically one and two in the Calder race right now. Number three, well, we got number three in our team as well. He's right here, Charlie McAvoy. If you want number four, you could probably look at Clayton Keller. You might be able to argue Jake DeBrusque. You could say Daunton Heinen, but there are a lot of good players that are rookies in this year's NHL draft, or in this year's NHL season, mind you. I'm just taking a look here. What would the Boston Bruins be like had they used their three draft picks consecutively in the 2015 draft to draft Barzal and Besser alongside of Jake DeBrusque. Let's simulate the season, see how things play out, and just take a look at how well these teams would fare. Brock Besser playing in real life, he's playing on basically what you could call the first line. He's basically on the first line for the Vancouver Canucks now, and the fact that the Canucks roll out um, consecutive lines, they like to keep things even, they like to make sure things are spread out, um, they do that, and things actually low-key work out once in a while. Sometimes they don't, often they don't, but sometimes they do. And Brock Besser, he's been having a magnificent season right here for the Vancouver Canucks, arguably leading the Calder race. Um, I say arguably very loosely. It's probably going to be Barzal's victory this year. But Besser, with 27 goals, 23 assists, 50 points, and 56 games this season, definitely not a bad player as well. Look at that. We beat the Vancouver Canucks 7-3. to three. Actually, no, no, no. Stop the simulation. Stop the simulation. Um, Besser playing on the first line. Yeah, he's on the second line here with the Bruins, but it's okay because Pasternak and Marshan are both really crazy good too. Um, Matthew Barz, on the other hand, he's been playing on the second line there with the Islanders. So yeah, he's been behind Johnny T and that line of Anders Lee and uh, Josh Bailey. Actually, I'm not sure if that's us that's still together. It might not be, but Barzal, he's been majoritarily playing on that second line. And Brock Besser, wow, he's leading the team in points already. Um, I wanted to stop the simulation because I wanted to look at the lines of the other teams. Let's take a look at the lines of the Vancouver Canucks and the lines of the New York Islanders just to see what their teams look like without their star players. So the Vancouver Canucks, wow. Even with the Brock Besser in the lineup, these lines suck. Don't get me wrong. Oh my goodness. You got Gons, Vertanen, Dorsett. He shouldn't really be here. Sutter, Nick Dowd, all these players up here. Look at that second line. Oh, that's so filthy. Ooh, what a second line. What a great second line. Going over to the defense core. We don't really need to see this, honestly. We don't really need to see it. Let's go over looking at the Islanders, NYI over here. All right, let's look at their starting lineups as well. So, wow, they actually have a lot of 70s in here. So, Barzal, he would most likely be slotting over here. And I think a guy like Nikolai Kuhleman or a Josh Hosang probably wouldn't be on the team. But other than that, you know, I don't know. Their top six looks pretty good with Matthew Barzal. Without him, it looks solid, but with Barzal, it, it steps up. But other than that, you know, I don't really, I'm not too sure. Huh. Boston definitely has the better of the two and, or the better of the three, mind you, but, uh, yeah, no, Boston, we've got a good team right here, so, yeah, let's continue, so, yeah, let's continue on with the simulation, and we'll proceed with that. All right, guys, we are back, and, wow, there were a lot of losses in this season mode, um, franchise mode, sorry, uh, if we go back to the beginning of the season, there are a few things that I actually want to look at. So it was around this point, I believe, I think it was this point, somewhere around here, where we actually stopped the simulation and then we got it back up again. Um, wow, the simulation was not good to us um, in the later middle parts of this span of time. Edmonton 3-1 loss, Tampa 3-2, Philly 7-4, Nashville 5-2. So we went on a few losing streaks here. Um, Islanders, Detroit, there's a win, but then New York, Columbus, Buffalo, Winnipeg, there's a win, a loss, loss, a win, a loss. We really weren't consistent up until this point. This point, we got a win, a win, a win, then overtime loss, win, win, shootout, win, 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 win. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten games with a point. So realistic realistic, because that was definitely achievable in real life. Ten games with a point here for the Bruins. This was their hot streak here in January. But uh, things, they started 
looking a little bit down a little bit later. So we got a few more regulation losses. There's a loss. 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 Wow. We went on a five game losing streak. Six if you include the shootout loss. Um, this span of time right here. This span of time here in February. From the second week of February to the start of March. Just look at this. 0 and 1. 0 1 and 1. 1 1 and 1. Then, wow, we just lost so many games. That's incredible. Uh, then there's a win, overtime loss. Uh, there, then there were some more wins over here. We went a four-game winning streak. That's pretty good. But uh, overall, the season, uh, we, lo we lose the final game of the season, 4-2. Uh, we got 43, 31, and 8, which sets us up for a good, solid 94 points in total. Um, are we in the playoffs? I hope so. Okay, no, that's not what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward to the scoring. And Barzal leads the team in scoring. We made the playoffs, too. Let's take a look at the um, the stats and everything. Barzal's actually a point per game right now, so that's pretty good in real life. And look, look at these lines. Wow, okay. So, all right, let's go to power play points. Okay, yeah, so that, that power play actually absolutely killed it. Absolutely killed things. If we look at Barzal, 77 points, 27 goals, 50, um, 50 assists in 82 games. Besser with 27 goals as well. Wow. So, what the heck? Besser has Besser has 27 goals in real life now. What? Come on. Besser needs more goals than 27. He's got that in real life at this moment in time. And in 82 games with a stacked bars all feeding him, he's not able to get more than 27. Are you serious? Jake DeBrusque had more than Besser with 29. DeBrusque down here with 65 points. Pretty good if you ask me. Um this third or this second line absolutely killed it. Look at their plus minus ratings. Um, power play points, they actually killed it as well, and they're all rookies too, so if you go to rookie skaters, yep, it, they're all here, and then Danton Heinen over here with 50 points as a rookie as well, Charlie McAvoy, 20 points, definitely one of the best defenders Boston has seen under the age of 21, so that's really good. And, uh, yeah, let's go to the full, uh, league right here, I'm so used to scrolling down, um, yeah, we absolutely killed it. Look at the Calder race. Barzal, Besser, DeBrusque, and then Heinen's over here. That's really good. Really, really good for the Boston Bruins. This is what would have transpired had the Boston Bruins drafted Matthew Barzal and Brock Besser in the 2015 NHL entry draft alongside of Jake DeBrusque. Let's go to all skaters. See you- oh my- of course! Of course! Stamkos and Kucherov, once again, 103 points, 95 points. Patty Kane down here, 91. Tarasenko and all that. Uh, where's, where's Barzal? Barzal's down here. All the way down here. All the way down here. He had the same amount of points as Connor McDavid. Okay, so Barzal is the same as McDavid. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good if you ask me. Let's simulate the playoffs just to see who will win the Calder. It will most likely be Barzal, but Besser is literally one point behind him. So, who knows? Basically, the top three Calder candidates, Barzal, Besser, DeBrusque in this universe, Heinen, and then McAvoy, basically the top five. They're all from Boston, if you want to take a look at this. And it's incredible to think that Boston could have had a team like this had they drafted Barzal and Besser. Let's simulate up to the end of the postseason just so we can get the awards done. And we're playing the Leafs in the first round. Okay, please, a Game 7 victory. A Game 7 victory, 4-3 to three comeback. Let's do it. Are we going to lose in the first round? Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, I thought we were going to come... Uh, we almost pulled it off, guys. We almost pulled off the reverse sweep. Wow. Wow, okay, so the young Boston Bruins, with a good first line and a stacked rookie second line, they weren't able to make it past the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's continue the simulation here. Come on, game. Hurry up. Hurry up. That's interesting, though. That's absolutely interesting. Wow, I didn't expect us to fall down 3 nothing to the Leafs only to win three straight. All right, so the Rangers win the cup this year. That's pretty good. Pretty good for the Rangers. Let's go over to the awards and see how things played out in the Calder race, because that's basically the only race we really care about, honestly. Um, but realistically, though, if we had Besser, Barzal, and DeBrusque as our first line, 
they would have gotten way more points. Let's be honest here. They might have been able to crack 85, maybe 90 points had they been playing on that first line. But at the same time, they were on that first line power play too. So who knows? And Barzal's playing on the second line in real life. So there's that, you know, there's that benefit of the doubt. Let's go over to the Calder in three, two, one. Calder, and it is Matthew Barzal who wins the Calder Trophy to no one's surprise. He had more points than Besser, but they really were neck and neck. In real life, you can't really say the same thing. Barzal, I think he's the clear Calder winner in this scenario in real life. Besser, he's a clear second place, but he's no Matthew Barzal. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video for plus, and you're not sure, so 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 you're not s